Hi guys, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master and today I thought I'd give you a run through of our two remote area testing trailers. As you may know, we develop a lot of off-road products for the caravan and camper trailer industries. And whilst you can develop and test a product in CAD and FEA, even do benchtop testing, we believe that nothing really tests a product like heading to the outback and beating them up. To be able to do that, we have to have some pretty solid platforms to make sure it's only our products that are getting tested and not the rest of the trailer. So last year, we set about designing some new ones. The initial plan was to make one trailer to do everything, but, but we quickly found out that that wasn't going to work. So in the end, we've ended up with a 2.8 ton single axle trailer that's nice and narrow to allow us to access pretty much any track in Australia. Then over here, we've got a four and a half ton tandem trailer, full road width, massive length so we can replicate a caravan chassis. So that's the basics of this trailers. Now, the really th big thing which makes them special is how modular they are, because we never know what trip we're gonna do and the gear that we're gonna need to take on them and the setup we're gonna need. So the drawbar in each one of these trailers is actually bolted on, not welded. So we can adjust where the drawbar sits for weight distribution. Additionally, the suspension underneath there is on a subframe that we can bolt in and out of the trailer. So that makes changing it over, testing new prototypes pretty simple. Also, by moving it forwards and back on this cradle, we can also adjust the weight distribution and the ball load so we can replicate any type of trailer. So now that I've kind of given you the basics of that, we'll head through each trailer and I'll show you the details. All right, so up the front of our trailers, we've obviously got a couple of couplings. Last year on the rat run, we were doing the final testing of our D035 and D045, the next generation of those. We were looking at things like bush wear and dust ingress and that type of stuff. So we were beating those up on the front of the trailers. Each one's got safety chains on. We go full belt and braces. We've got the high tensile chain on here, just in case something does go wrong. Got breakaway devices on both of them. And then up here, we've got a multi-fit platform to allow us to play with and test any type of jockey wheel or jack. So on the big four and a half tonner, we've got our own Cruise Master two-ton slimline jack. On this, we've got an electric product that we were having a play with. So it's not just a case of us testing our own products. We like to have a play with other people's stuff and also test stuff which may become a Cruise Master product later. Obviously, if we put a product onto the market that we don't personally design and make, we must make sure that it lives up to our own standards, hence why this thing's on the front of it. Had a bit of a rough time, let's put it that way. All right, round here on the toolbox side of things. Under this lid here, we've got our battery management system. So this is all looked after by Red Arc, it's BMS. This handles all our inputs and outputs, so we get feed from the car and from um, 10 amp socket, they're plugging it in for charging at home and at the workshop. This has got load disconnect as well, so when we put it on storage mode, it cuts everything out. So if we do leave a light on or something like that, uh, it doesn't flatten the battery. Now, talking about the battery, this is an AGM. We were going to fit a lithium, but we ran out of funds at, at the point. The budget got a bit high, so we had to, had to back it off a bit. When this AGM does eventually burn out, we are gonna put a lithium in it so we get a bit more payload out of the things and a bit more depth of charge. Uh, the Red Arc has been great in fault finding, so we did have some issues on the trip with charging from the car, but because we could see what was going in, what was going out, we knew we had a problem and it allowed us to fix it. On the back of the box here, this controls all of the outputs. So this is just basically a box full of wires and Anderson plugs. It's got big 150 amp Anderson plugs on it, way overkill for any of the loads, but we did want to make sure that they were tough and robust. So this allows us at any point we can connect a different load. So say for example, all of these toolboxes on the side, which we'll go through, they've got lights on them, allows us to plug them in. Also, if we were testing a new air control system, for example, we can just plug it in and it's got power instantly. Nice and easy for us to interchange products for testing. Each of the trailers has got a, a few spares on them. The single axle has got two spares, the tandem's got four spares. So we're not gonna get stuck at the side of the road because we've got a flat tire. We're gonna get lots of kilometers down, so it's important that we're completely self-sufficient. Also in there buried, we've got a Hydrostar electric over hydraulic booster. So on the trip last year, we were testing some disc brakes. So we have to actuate them and that's why that's there. All plugged in through the, through the BMS there. All right, let's have a look at the toolboxes on the trailer. 
Each one of the trailers has got a couple of aluminium toolboxes on them. Obviously, we've got to carry a lot of stuff on our trips. We've got spare drums, spare bearings, sleeping gear, food, all that type of gear we've got to carry. And this, in particular, this one was full of tools. So these aluminium toolboxes are mounted on top of a frame, which basically acts as the wheel arch. It means we can remove them easily so we can reconfigure the trailers. As far as tools go, we have to be self-sustainable. You never know what's going to go wrong, so we've got to have a tool for every job. So we carry a lot of them. In the PCOR box, I'll show you in a minute, we've got the majority of the tools. They're for the things that we don't have to do too frequently, but we've got to have the gear anyway. In this one, we had the tools that we had to get to frequently to check stuff, to fix stuff, which was um, a, a common issue. So for example, we had the electric battery gear in here. If we had to take a wheel off, we've got to flat that type of stuff. Um, we only use Milwaukee. It's important that if you do take tools on the trip, they are good quality. There's no point in taking them and having the weight if they're not going to work. So you've got to have the good gear. Um, as well as the electrical stuff, we obviously have to have the hand tools. This year we use Atlas 46 tool rolls. This allowed us to take out the high frequency stuff that we needed more often, chuck it in one of these, and it was easy to get to. We could just grab it and go and do the job. It made things far quicker. So in these we had spanners and sockets and side cutters for dealing with zip ties and that type of thing. These things got abused. They were in the ball dust, they got buried, all that type of stuff. And the, the zip sealed well, they're a great product. The ball dust is still on there. And we're gonna keep using them for years to come. In each of these toolboxes, we've also got a bit of power and lighting. So we've got a control panel here, which controls all the lights on them, as well as some USB points if the team need to uh, charge iPhones, cameras, and that type of stuff. They got lighting on the inside so we can see what's going on at night, what we need to grab out of the toolboxes, as well as some steady work lights out here. So if we need to get some uh, specific light onto a job or task, we can do that pretty easily. All right, so now we're going to head over to the other side of the trailer and we'll show you what's in there. All right, so in this side, it's a bit of a mess at the moment, but we have to carry a lot of recovery gear on our trips. You never know what we're going to get ourselves into, so we're going to be able to get out of it. And we've got a pretty good relationship over the years with Max Tracks, which means we get to play with some of their cool new gear before it gets released. So we took last year on the trip a few of their new prototype recovery gear, um, snatch rings and um, snatch straps and that type of stuff. We didn't get to have a really good play with them last year. Luckily, we didn't get too stuck. Did have to snatch the 200 off the side of the road with one when it stopped. So it did work in that, but hopefully in the coming months, we're gonna be able to um, get out there and really put them through their paces. On both of these trailers, we've got some big frames around the outside of them. These give us a couple of um, a good functions. So we can fit awnings and roof racks and that type of stuff to them, give us a bit more space. Also allow us to play with putting some weight higher up on the trailers to look at handling of the, of the vehicles. As well as in the event of a rollover, the aim is that they do take the brunt of it and it doesn't do too much damage to the rest of the trailer and what's on the top of them. As you can see here on the tandem, we've got some big work lights on them. These are all around the trailer. They're from Steady. One of the big things we wanted to make sure is when we got to a campsite at night and we needed to get everything done that we weren't all stumbling around in the dark and tripping over stuff. So we put tons of light on them this year and it was brilliant. All right, moving forwards here, we've got a tire rack on the back. Like I've mentioned, this is, this is four of them. This allows us to have a couple of spares for this trailer as well as for the tow vehicles. So we aim to have two spares for each tow vehicle on the trip. Um, you may wonder why it's at the back of the trailer. Firstly, it's about accessibility. It's nice and easy to get to. Um, as well as we've got a lot of weight at the front with the P core box and the batteries and that type of stuff. So we did need to offset it a bit to make sure we didn't go too overboard with our ball weight on this particular trailer. From here, you can see the backbone of the chassis of these two trailers. We basically got two main rails welded to one another. One of them carries the majority of the load and the other allows us to attach whatever we need to the chassis. So we don't tend to pull stuff down with ratchet straps, we actually bolt them into the trailer. That makes sure these things aren't gonna move when we're on corrugations. So that's what all these holes are cut into the top of them. Um, in this spot here, we did have a bunch of jerry cans on it. So when we were crossing the Tanami last year, we had plenty of fuel. You can also see from the other side there, there's big holes and some channels in it. 
This year, we wanted to make sure we weren't going to have a problem with brake wires and lights and that type of stuff being cut through by rocks. So we hid them inside the chassis rail. We could still get to them if we needed to, and it completely protected them. So that was great. And it also allowed us to have good access to the bolts holding the suspension frames into the trailer. Now, talking about the suspension frames, you can see under, underneath there, got a big 150 chassis member. So that takes the main suspension loads from the road and then transforms them into the trailer. So that's, that's nice and strong section there. Uh, we've got gas can holders on the back here. So obviously we've got to eat. So we've got to have some gas on the trailers. One of the big obstacles that we had to overcome when designing these two new trailers was what we're going to do with the kitchen and the rest of the tools. In the rat trailer, we had a big heavy toolbox and a massive kitchen that was also pretty heavy. So when we were designing this, we had to make sure we had something light and we could take it on and off the trailer. So we had a bit of a look around, we considered making our own. Then we remembered that Patriot campers had these PCOR boxes for the back of the vehicles. So I gave Justin a call, we went down and checked them out. And we decided this was the way we wanted to go. So these particular ones are actually off a 2500 RAM to give us the maximum width and they're, they're super useful. So up here we've got these big spots that we can put long items like chairs and stuff like that. It'd be difficult to put in other places. In these trays, we broke the old toolbox down and took the inserts out, dropped them into these so we could um, maximize the space available. We've got some foam inserts that we slide in over the top to stop the sockets rolling all over the place from the corrugations. So that's what's in here. Got some bigger storage here. We had um, various parts and zip ties and that type of stuff in here. Um, big control system here, same BMS that's running in both of the trailers to control the lights and the aluminium toolboxes, as well as a massive inverter for charging and that type of stuff. So heading around here, um, basically the same setup in here, um, same BMS and everything. Each one of the trailer has got its own set of max tracks on it. This one's on the front, the other one's on the back. Because we never know, depending on where we're going to be on the track, whether the other one's gonna be able to um, come and recover you. So we want to some degree to be self-recoverable in, in as many situations as we can do. Up the front here, like I said before, we've got the Cruise Master Jack. As this is a capable of 450 kilo ball weight, we need to have a pretty stout jack. And this is about the only thing on the market that can take that load without bending. It was designed for the Brisbane City Council, so you know it's gonna be strong. We've got the attachment points here for weight distribution. Obviously, when we are testing the big off-road couplings, we need to make sure that we put in the maximum load through them, so we use those to put the extra stress on. Um, same gear up the front, coupling and the breakaway device. Before we get into the other side of the P-Core box, I just thought I'd show you these jacks we've got on all of the trailers. So these are Bulldog jacks. They have a sliding internal mechanism as well as a screw thread. And they're rated high enough such that we can lift the whole trailer up on them. So we use a drill um, and we just zip it down through that nut. We can lift the whole thing up. We can take arms out, wheels off, really easy to work on the trailers. So massive improvement for us to be able to change stuff out on the road, on the trips. Right, heading into this side. This is reasonably self-explanatory. We've got a fridge this side. Uh, we actually had three fridges on the last trip. So this was the stuff we needed for lunch and stuff like that. As well as this is the kitchen side of things and there is a cooker and a little pantry thing. So we had bread and um, non kind of perishables in that, in, in that thing there. Um, following on from the kitchen, um, we were seeing that Navigator were doing a bunch of stuff on um, social media with a lot of their um, camping and caravanning gear. So we got in touch with them and we used a few of their bits of equipment last year. In particular, this um, cutlery roll was really easy to use and it managed to keep all of the, all of the cutlery in place over the corrugated roads. We made a, a couple of hooks so we can hang it on there so we can be in the fridge cooking stuff and we got access to our utensils. Really easy to hand. So, Great product there. We also used some of their other gear in the back of the car so we could organize the camera equipment along the way as well. So clearly this side of things was kind of pantry, kitchen related stuff. We had a box in here sealed up so it had all the breakfast cereal and that type of stuff in there. So we were all good to go. Um, last thing I want to mention as well is wheels and tires. It's a bit of an underrated thing. Um, 
typically we used um, a 26575R16 in our tests, but we've been finding that people have been running bigger and bigger tires. So this year, and for these trailers, we've gone standard on a 285-7516, so 33 inch in the old money. On a strong um, ROH rim, well rated above what we put them through, and we've commonized it between both trailers. So they're both five stud cruiser, zero offset, easy to get, also common with my 76 series, so it gives us a bit more interchangeability. So that's a run around our remote area testing trailers. If you want to see them, out there in the wild, check out our Rat Run series from last year over on YouTube. We've got a couple of extra bonus episodes coming out shortly after this one where we talk about the things which happened to our 200 and also what our suspension arms look like after they've been beaten up around the outback. So make sure you don't miss that.